Hello, my name is Edmond Gamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, to this episode's lecture. Fair value, IFRS 13. Now, the objective of IFRS 13 fair value measurement applies to all IFRSs that require or permit fair value measurement or disclosures and provides a single IFRS framework for measuring fair value and requires disclosures about fair value measurement. Now, the standard defines fair value on the basis of an exit price notion and uses a fair value hierarchy which results in a market base rather than an entity-specific measurement. Let's look at some definitions. We'll start with a fair value. Now, the fair value is the price that will be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability in an orderly transaction between market participants at the measurement date. All this explanation goes to tell that the fair value is the exit price. Okay. Now, an orderly transaction is one that assumes exposure to the market for a period before the date of measurement to allow for normal marketing activities, that is buying and selling and negotiation, to take place and to ensure that it is not a forced transaction. Now, when measuring fair value, an entity uses the assumption that market participants will use when pricing the asset or liability under current market condition. So consequently, fair value is focused on the assumption of the marketplace and it's not entity specific. So this means that the fair value is measured using the same assumptions used by a market participant and takes into consideration the same characteristics of this asset or liability. Okay, so such conditions will include the condition and location of the asset and any restriction on its sale or use. Active market. So this is a market in which transactions for the asset or liability take place with sufficient frequency and volume to provide pricing information on an ongoing basis. Exit price. So an exit price is the price that will be received to sell an asset or pay to transfer a liability. Highest and best use. Now the use of a non-financial asset by market participant that would maximize the value of the asset or a group of assets and liabilities within which is going to be used. Most advantageous market. The market that maximizes the amount that will be received to sell an asset or minimize the amount that will be paid to transfer a liability after taking into consideration transaction cost and transport costs. The final one is the principal market. So this is the market with the greatest volume and level of activity or frequency for an asset or a liability to determine its fair value. When it comes to input, IFRS 13 adopts a hierarchical approach to measuring fair value by categorizing the input used in valuation techniques into three levels. So level one, inputs that are unadjusted quoted prices in active markets for items identical to the asset or liability being measured. Now, if there is a quoted price in an active market, an entity uses that price without any adjustment. Okay. So an example of this would be prices quoted on a stock exchange. Okay. So here, this kind of inputs are the ones that are quoted in an active market and require no adjustment in pricing the asset or the liability. So level two, and these are inputs other than the quoted prices determined in level one, the ones that do not require adjustment, that are directly or indirectly observable for the asset or liability. So they're likely to be quoted asset or liability for similar items in an active market or supported by market data. So for example, interest rates, credit spreads, or yield curves. So adjustment may be needed for input in level two. And if these adjustments are significant, then it may require the fair value to be classified as level three. The last level. So here inputs are unobservable. This input should be used only when it is not possible to use level one or level two inputs. Now unobservable inputs are used to measure fair value to the extent that relevant observable inputs are not available, thereby allowing for situations in which there is little if any, market activity for the asset or liability at the measurement date. Now, an entity develops unobservable inputs 
using the best information available in the circumstances, which might include the entity's own data, taking into account all information about market participant assumptions that is reasonably available. The entity should maximize the use of relevant observable input and minimize the use of unobservable input. So if the first one is not available, they have to try all they can to get input now for under the level two and do away with if possible for three. Let's start talking about evaluation techniques. So an entity uses valuation techniques appropriate in the circumstances and for which sufficient data are available to measure the fair value, maximizing the use of relevant observable inputs and minimizing the use of unobservable inputs. So very widely used valuation techniques are present. The first one is a market approach. So here, prices and other relevant information generated by market transactions involving identical or comparable assets or liability or a group of assets are used. Now we move on to the cost approach. This approach reflects the amount that will be required currently to replace the service capacity of an asset. Then lastly, an income approach. So here, future cash flows are converted to a single or discounted amount reflecting current market expectations about those future amounts. So in all, a single valuation technique may be appropriate in some cases, whilst in other cases, multiple approaches will suffice in other times. So folks, that is where we are going to draw down the curtain on our discussion on fair value. If you have any comments or feedback for us, do want to drop them in the comment section below and it will be timely addressed. Also that, we will crave your indulgence to subscribe if you haven't. Click on the notification bell by it, share and like. You can also follow us on the various social media handles listed on the screen. So we come to you again by way of tutorials and the go. Take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.